<laughs> Greetings! It's so good to be here today. I know if you watch daytime television, this show is just really small and not so exciting as some of the shows that are on daytime television. But we're going to make it as exciting as we can today. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Audience, here's guest today that I'd like to interview. It's the man who mows my lawn. Jim Marquardt, would you come up and join me? Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Oh, good. As you can see, the audio on this video Something <laughs> happened, I have no clue what, but the audio seems to have disappeared, so you can't hear what I'm saying. Basically, what I talked about is how proud we are of how beautiful and pristine Jim keeps the lawn when he mows. And we talked about how he's able to keep it green during the summer, and then how he collects the leaves during the autumn. I also talked about various gardening methods like the Ruth Stout method and Hugel culture and I explained some of the things that I did to learn about various gardening methods. So that is basically what this part <laughs> is about and you just have to Watch me. You can see me being excited about my speaking. And I wish you could hear me, but you can't. So that's the way it goes. And I didn't have a written script, or I would say it all over again. It was off the top of my head, basically. I did win Best Speaker today. There were two of us speaking, two besides Jim and I. Uh, there was one other person that spoke. So, I think that, that's all I have to say about the fact that you can't hear me. You can just watch, and then when we get to the part where you can hear me again, you'll hear me again. I struggled at it, but it also had microgreens in it, which I have started growing. And I like to sit, in, when I can't go out and garden. I'd like to sit and watch the TV. And I have discovered YouTube. What do I like to watch on YouTube? Um, if I recall, and I seem to be there every day when I come into the house from the United States, is gardening shows. <laughs> Definitely. And I've learned so much about gardening. Some of you may know some of the terms. <laughs> I know Elaine's been a master gardener in the past. There's such a thing as the Ruth Stout method. There's Hugel culture. There's Back to Eden. And there's numerous other methods of gardening. Well, I try to do part of those in my garden. <clears throat> you take the big, long cardboard thing for me. What did I do with that? Well, you indicated that you were going to dig a hole about four feet long. And then she'll put that cardboard inside inside the dirt and then cover it back up with dirt and then she'll plant some plants. Right, and you left out one of the things that I put inside <coughs> after I dug the hole and put the cardboard in. I had been collecting food scraps mm -hmm. from you know, things that I do in the kitchen. Just organic ones. Nothing that had anything to do with animals, just plant material. And I threw those in there, and then a whole bunch of leaves, and then the dirt went on top. And that's called hugel culture. Some people put logs and stuff down. They'll dig a little deeper than I did and put logs in there before they put all the stuff that I put in. I did that in several locations in my garden, too, with just scraps of cardboard from various little boxes that I've acquired over time. He throws a lot of cardboard boxes in it. Recycle bin. But 
every now and then I make him keep some of them. <laughs> In the month of October and November, the grass wasn't growing so much, but you still mowed the lawn sometimes twice a day. What were you doing that for? Well, I was told that to keep a good yard green and is to pick up the leaves so they do not kill the grass because leaves can actually kill the grass if it sits there and then just piles on it. We have several trees, we have a poplar, several poplar trees mm -hmm. and what it does, it'll smother the grass where the grass cannot get the moisture that it needs and that's why I pick up the leaves. And I had you do something certainly some of the day. Yes, uh, you had me pick up some weed because the lot more that are what the Paul said was better for the garden. So I made sure that when those smaller leaves came down that I picked them up in the lawnmower and then I put them where she can use them for the garden. The bigger leaves for some reason will not mulch as good and they will actually do more detriment to the garden so I threw those away. Okay. Well, actually the bigger leaves would have worked, but it takes longer for the bigger ones to decompose. And so what I did with those big uh, sacks, garbage sacks full of leaves, is I poked holes in the sack so that water and air can get in there. And two things are gonna happen with those. Some of it I already put on part of the garden, but the part that is still in the sacks, I am going to, in the spring, I will use part of it for mulch on the ground, which as he said, smothers out the weeds, hopefully. And the other part, as it sits in those bags, it will turn into something called leaf mold. And leaf mold eventually will turn into soil that you can use to put nutrients back into the ground in your garden. And that's one of the things that I'm doing with the leaves. Just a week or two ago, I got something in the mail from a seed company. What was that? I recall it was a package of seeds. Okay. And she did get a magazine that had every seed that you could want. Almost every seed. It only had uh, like 150 pages. No uh, marijuana uh, seeds. <laughs> no, there were no marijuana seeds in there. I don't know that that company sells them. Anyway, they do have a, a catalog that you can buy that has over 300 pages of seeds. So that catalog that I got in the mail is only a portion of what that company sells. They sell, if you go to rareseeds.com, it's the company's called Baker Creek, and they sell really good seeds. They're known to have seeds that germinate. Like, I've gone to the dollar store and gotten a bag of, a package of seeds for 20 cents. You're taking a risk there. Sometimes they germinate, sometimes they don't. But the Baker Creek ones usually will germinate, and they do have somewhat of a guarantee, so if, if they absolutely don't work, you can let them know and they'll replenish their seeds for you. So I sat down and I figured out what I want to, I made a list of the things I'd like, and then over the next few weeks before springtime comes, I'll need to kind of narrow that down so that I don't buy every seed in the catalog, <laughs> because that would just be a little more than what my little garden space will handle. But I really have enjoyed gardening, and I have really enjoyed the pride that my husband takes in keeping the lawn beautiful. And I hope that I can do my part to help him with the landscaping part of it, so that not only is our lawn beautiful, but that we have things that the neighbors enjoy looking at as well. And I have finally persuaded him not to use chemical sprays on my flowers and killing them. He has been known to do that in the past. And I'm hoping that I can persuade him to use some more <coughs> organic type things. Uh, I was reading just yesterday about how we can spray our apple tree or things that we can do with our apple tree to keep the worms 
from eating the apples. And I'm going to share with him when we get home how to do that. So thank you very much today. I have really enjoyed you being, you being our guest. And thank you very much.